And once again, Maddie, thank you for, uh, for talking about that leadership conference. I can remember when I was 12 years old, I told Mark a minute ago that I was picking my nose and mowing yards. <laughs> and then I started to think about it, I'm still doing that. But anyway, uh, our guest today, our guest speaker, needs no introduction. He's been a member of this club for many years. I'm uh, honored to say that he and I were in the eighth grade together. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Todd Holden. I've been asked to, to talk about the Arena Project. And uh, I think the last time I visited with you all, the project was just beginning to take some shape. Matter of fact, I don't know that we'd even have the authority formed at that time. I can't, I can't really remember when that was. So I'd like to bring you up to date a little bit on what's going on uh, with the authority. And what I'd really like to do is to get some questions on the table from you all and understand what you all want to talk about about the project, okay? Because there's a lot of unknowns at this point, but there's a lot of uh, questions out there. And if we can answer the questions, we, uh, the frog in my pocket and myself, will attempt to try to, uh, to, to answer them. So <clears throat> we do have the Arena Authority that's formed now. It's a seven-member seven board. It's representatives from the city of Alva, it has a representative from the county, the commissioners. It has a representative uh, from the uh, tourism tax. It has a representative from the uh, Ruth and Jean Leslie uh, Foundation. It has a, two members actually from the Share Trust. Uh, my father is the representative from Share Trust and I'm actually an ad hoc uh, member of the authority. And so that's been formed, it's documented and filed. The city of Alva is the benefactor of the trust. So uh, in the event that something would ever happen, everything goes back to the city of Alva. We have very little funding at this point. We have lots of promises and lots of hope. We have lots of ideas of things that we'd like to see. We'd lot, we have uh, lots, of different in, uh, lots of different input that's coming from the community, or at least some input that's coming from the community about what they'd like to see there. Uh, while uh, we are very interested in an arena so that we can house rodeos and other events such as anything indoors uh, from uh, stock shows, livestock shows, from hog shows, bull riding, concerts, any of that, anything that you can do in a public arena is what we're looking for. We're focusing on uh, concrete floor at this particular point in time. We think that that's going to be important that we can move dirt in or take it out for rodeo type events. The other things that we're interested in is stall barns for events that come in. We're also interested in being able to seat three to five hundred people for a sit down dinner, which we don't own. There's not a facility in town that you can do that very comfortably for at this time. Um, that's one of that's that's a that's a it's a it's a very small pittance of the amount of things that we want to be able to do with it. So the authority's been formed. We've had several meetings. We, we do have a, an architect that's given us some ideas, and we are in the process of going through the planning stages about figuring out what buildings we might need, what we might have that would be useful, and locations. So with that, I'm going to stop and ask you to hit me with some questions, some of which I might be able to answer, some of which I won't be able to answer. Uh, so we'll start. Henry? What's, what's your time frame as far as when you're supposed to think of break dirt, when you have a correction completed, and when you're supposed to be likely to have your first event? According to my father, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that, I, that's a good question. I don't have any idea. I don't know that we can even answer that at this point in time. We're moving, we're, we're meeting uh, monthly at least. Uh, we're having special meetings in between that time frame. We're in the planning process at this point. A, a really wise man told me one time to uh, walk slowly and drink a lot of ice water. And I think that's what we're probably trying to do at this point, to try to make sure that we go as slow as we need to or can in these planning stages to make sure that we get as many things accomplished as we can. And then when the construction phase starts, and the funding in the construction phase starts, that we can move it rapidly. You know, if I was going to guess, I don't know that I could guess. I would certainly hope it would be completed within 24 months, but is that realistic? I don't, I don't know that it is at this point in time. Doc? I've heard some talk about tearing down some of the 
livestock and horse barns that are in there. Seems to me that I'm old enough, they seem new to me. <laughs> well, they may be. Like there's a lot of places west of there or south of there that they can be built. If you're having rodeos and ropings and things like that, and people are going to come and stay for two or three days, of day, <coughs> which would be hopefully something like that might happen with that kind of facility, it would be nice to have a place for them to put your horses rather than tie them out beside the trailer. That's exactly right. And I think those things are being considered. Um, so, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without, right? That's my mother's favorite phrase. And, and I feel like that that's what we are doing at this point. Trying to, so when the architects and the design people come in and they start talking about us, about the existing stall barns, for example, that are now 25, maybe plus years of age, old, and they start looking at them from the outside in and they think about uh, things about uh, like the columns where there might have been dirt or manure that was up against those columns and now they're rusted and now they might be uh, less structurally sound than what they were at one time with new requirements for ventilation on that type of construction the heights may not be tall enough for the horse barns. So that's a, those are a couple of small things that they will throw out when they're talking about either we retrofit or rebuild or maybe even possibly move those those barns. Um, Are those, is that something you have to worry about as far as using the barns? For future use? Um, They've got years left in them. They do have lots of years left in them. Right. Yeah. So do, do those things have to be brought up to date if there's a reason that's going to use them? They no, they don't have to be. They don't have to be. They could just be utilized. They won't belong to the arena. Well, that's that's unquestionable. This we don't know for sure about the answer to that question at this time. Um, the location hopefully will encompass all buildings that are out there, and so that all of the structures could be under under one umbrella, if you will, so that they might look attractive and 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 uniform, be painted the same, and be a part of the event center. Uh, does the city of Alva not own all of that section and all the facilities and infrastructure on that section? It's kind of an interesting question. And Dr. McKinley, I don't know that I completely answered your question. We may get back to that before this is over. But to Mr. Buckles, to tell you about that, the, the city of Alva owns the land that was given by the by the prisoner of war camp when they went and it went under the direction of the airport authority so the airport authority is own is uh, ultimately responsible for it the city of alva actually has the dirt as long as there's an airport facility available and it's and it's being used as an airport and what, if they decommission the airport or close the airport then it actually goes back to the united states government and they figure out what happens to it so as long as there's an airport there the land is owned by the city of alva okay that takes care of the dirt the buildings are owned possibly by them or possibly by Woods County because Woods County is responsible for the maintaining of that facility and has been for years and years and years. So they've been responsible for keeping up and placing the buildings that are out there with the, with the exception of a couple that have been put, put out there privately. So yes, they kind of are. And by I'm sure it's probably all together now by the city of Alba, but that's that's the long answer, but that's the, it's it's very convoluted. That's the reason it's the word is. Are there uh, underground utilities, easements, etc., around those horse barns that would prevent building anything over them? There are some underground um, utilities that as the easements. I'm not sure because it's a municipality. I don't know that the easements are going to be too big of a problem. There is limited water and limited sanitary sewer at the location out there. Most of the sanitary sewer goes east along uh, between the fairgrounds and the VFW building. And the water lines are scarce. There are some new water lines when they reenacted the, the uh, water tower. There was a new low water line that was laid there. So there's access. Larry? I've heard a rumor that there might be a restaurant included in this. It, that's been one of the requirements or one of the requests anyway that there be a restaurant facility or commercial kitchen actually is the way it's designed where there be a commercial kitchen that, that could be leased or could be utilized, could be rented, could be a restaurant, could be a possibility. Maybe if you're going to have a banquet or something out there that seats four or five hundred people and you're going to have to have a pretty big kitchen. Yep, I think so. It would be a pretty large call out to McDonald's or Sonic. <laughs> You know, and I, and I'm, I 
late to the discussion on this, but so are we talking about this being predominantly south of the existing radio facilities? Anything new structure-wise being south of the current radio building? I don't think anything's off the on the table or off the table as far as the as far as the location of the buildings or how the, there's several different designs out there. Nothing in nothing in stock. And on Max's question earlier, I, I guess what I was kind of taking from Max deal was the existing arenas in poor space to me is looks like a looks like a practice arena to me, a place to go practice or, or house or order new stalls to house warm up area and in stall animals in a my vision would be to be a nice new arena somewhere south of there or back east or wherever and the existing facility would become the practice arenas or smaller events, you know, or something to do with the county fair and need them to put judging in or something. Or right. Whatever. You know, maybe there wouldn't be the place where you had a big crowd where the ventilation rules or some of that stuff would, would matter as much. Correct. I think part of the problem with the old arena is that it's got a, a bowstring structure that goes that's somewhat antiquated, not not structurally in sound, but it's a it's a different kind of. And if you do things like put insulation in it or provide for heating and air conditioning, it makes it uh, limited on what they can do there. Are you, yeah. are you uh, looking at heating? We are with OG and E's. They have pledged that they are going to provide all electricity free, and we are going to air condition it because of that. Did you have a uh, you got an approximate measure what you're looking at? No, uh, you know, not until we get closer to the, you know, at this point. No. Well, I, I would say that the the new one that got in in Woodward County, the uh, event center over there, it's uh, they did it well. And they uh, they have no shortage right now of people wanting to rent it and use it. I think uh, what you're talking about, Ben. There, I don't know if there's another facility even around that would have an inside arena. I think you guys could get to go. and be a great addition to this part of the state. We think it would be too. And with the free electricity, we think it'll be a real boom for the, for the whole field. But the, uh, Woodward is a prime example. The uh, the design team that built at least portion of Woodward is the design team that, that, that we have doing our site survey at this time. Did you get that free electricity commitment in writing? Yes, we did. <laughs> well, I've got six contracts with OG. I had a new contract, I had a new hookup. They made me put down a $150 good paid deposit. <laughs> Appreciate it. You, you, yeah. you obviously didn't talk to the right people. Well, obviously, I didn't. But I'm, I'm looking at one right now. That I'm right here. Yes, Arden. Would you repeat your budget statement for the new facility? Yes, sir. Using the same amount of electricity that was used for the existing one. Use it up. Wear it out. Make it do or do without. <laughs> Use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. It gets spoken freely around our house. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? Questions? Doc? Someone mentioned that Woodward's having no trouble having the vets wanting to come in. That was the thing that worried me. I think a facility like that, and there's a good one at Woodward, one thing, another. How many do we Some, need? Somebody <laughs> needs to be running that, trying to get events to come here. Is that? Yeah. Has it been or is it going to be arranged for? Or? We certainly hope so. A coordinator, an event coordinator will be a, a must with this facility. It's going to be the life or death of it. It will be. And, and in fact, the committee is talking about that, uh, that resume already to try to put together the, uh, the qualifications for that, for that job. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be the lifeblood of it. And trying to figure out whether it may be one or two or three coordinators to, to cover all the aspects that we need to cover. Yes? I don't know what all that building, the new building in the front ground where Cherokee uh, does or the whips and hand or something else. Would that be a competition for us that close? Definitely. It already is. I mean, you know, we lose events all the time to Cherokee because of, of what they're doing. You know, that it's my understanding that that's a county commissioner project that they underwrote that wrote that completely and have and have remodeled it several times, and the rent is very economical. Yeah, it'll definitely be competition 
and tax dollars that are going to Alfalfa County instead of coming to Woods. Yes. What sort of an estimate for total cost have you looked at? You know, it's, it's really un, unknown at this particular time. Uh, it, it depends on the structures and it depends on the sides and how many buildings we actually end up with. What's being able to retrofit, what will have to be taken down, and we're, we're right in the middle of that right now. Well, you will probably be depending on financial contribution from, from the people. Can you help with this project? Yes, and from the people is 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 true. Looking for any kind, of, you know, we're we're going to seek for grants and some funding outside of the community. There is there is no plan at this point to to look for a sales tax or look for any kind of abnormal tax. Any of those kind of none of that is is on the table at all. We we'll, we will be looking for the city to help if, as they can. We will be looking for the tax dollars to help as they can but not invoking any kind of sales tax. And the county also. We feel like it's going to be a county, it's a county project. It's not just an ALBA project, it's a county project. Have you looked into bond financing and see whether there's some underwriters willing to back that? We have not, but that's certainly on the plate. Or, or a TIF district? We don't feel like the TIF district is a, is, a, is a great idea, and that's certainly within our wheelhouse that we could do because of the structuring and the way that we set the cost out, that it could certainly happen. We feel like that it's going to be a, a that some kind of finance will have to be in place. We don't we know that we won't be able to underwrite the whole thing uh, with contributions so far. But, uh, as far as we just haven't got we gotta have some dollar figures first before we can go very far. But I think Woodward is fifteen million. That's what I understand. I, I you know, and I'm I would love to know what that is. I heard a number that was substantially higher than that. Um, I heard that from Jay Dunn. So, so that may be that may be close. Doc, I was mainly an expert of that, and then explain TIF district to me. Well, it, it it only takes about an hour and a half to really get completely through it. <laughs> I, I'm also retired. So. <laughs> Basically, what it does, and and Bill could help me pass through this, but you you set a sales tax. Your your ad valorem taxes are set at this level, right? And and when you when you form a TIF district inside an area, like for Avard, for example, it's it's two sections that are, that encompass the Avard Rail Park. It's called a TIF district. And so as those ad valorem taxes increase because of buildings, because of structures, because of increased land values, whatever, as they increase, that increase amount goes towards that TIF, goes into that what they call the TIF district to pay for restructuring, refinancing, uh, new structures and things like that. It does not reduce the amount of income that goes to the county because that current, that current ad valorem that's below that stays that way and the and school districts are also funded the same way but any increase will go to the TIF district and there's a period of time that 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 fulfills and then there's obligations that have to be to qualify in that TIF district has to be voted on that's strictly all bad the warm taxes that's correct that close TIF yes and and of course the reason for any uh, entity to go along with that tax entity is because the increased revenue from sales tax, people living there, uh, the revenue from the hotels, motels, will dramatically increase because of all that infrastructure. Such as the Devon Tower. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and you may or may not know uh, that the Devon Tower is sitting right in the middle of a TIF district that I think only encompasses that building, is that I correct? So. Yeah. And, uh, and in a park. Yeah, there, yeah, there's a park there too. That, so that, that just that section of Oklahoma City and it's it's providing enormous amounts of, of tax payment for for that financing. It's it's a it's a fabulous animal, but it's an animal. Yes, ma'am. What's the impact to the existing fairgrounds once we get the arena built up? Well, you know, I wind up with a whole bunch of buildings that nobody uses for all but about one weekend of the year, or what? Well, okay, let's, let's take that up in a couple of different questions. Okay. Um, so if the, if the fairground stays where it is and the event center is built at that location, which is highly probable that if it's built in that location, 
It was the original desire of the committee, and whether that happens or not, we don't know, because that has that's water that's not under the bridge yet. It was the desire that the that the arena authority would encompass all of the existing structures that were out were out there, and the maintenance and the upkeep that would provide an, a location to provide a lot of uni, uniformity across that, where they would all look the same, they'd be maintained the same, they'd have that same aesthetic appeal, so on and so forth, so that they could be utilized in the community as, you know, if you had a big event, you would be in a, in a big arena. If you had a small event, you might be in the women's If you had a medium event, you might be in the merchant's building, so that it would attract. Part of the, part of the goal is to attract some businesses or at least county agents, maybe, or some other facet of government to locate their office there so that we would have constant traffic to that facility. Because I don't know how many people go to the fairgrounds now. Most of you, I'm guessing, will go once or twice a year to the fairgrounds, to a special event, maybe, or to the fair. And then otherwise, you don't even go out there. So we're looking for something that will increase traffic and bring people there on a daily basis so that it can be utilized every day. Todd, one of the things I heard in the community was that once this happened that uh, you know the idea of getting to rent the women's building for 150 bucks for our little banquet or church cookout or you know a murrah option or a feasing option that that would all you know be, be priced out, out of the picture and they wouldn't be able to afford it because now the rates would be on those small events that we've traditionally done you know whether it's wedding receptions or auctions or banquets or whatever out there any, any truth in that matter? Is that something that's probably going to be, is, is there any validity in the net concern, I guess? Well, if Wallace Auction Service shows up to rent the building, it's going to be substantially more than what it was yeah. before. <laughs> 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 However, you know, those are questions that are, are still on the table. Uh, it, obviously, it does not do any good to have a facility if nobody uses it because they can't afford it. That doesn't do anybody any good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And hopefully, obviously, what we're really driving is sales tax usage and moving more people to northwest Oklahoma. And so with that as the driving feature, I think it would shoot ourselves in the foot to put the annual rent for the women's building to be $1,000 or $2,000 or $3,000. Now, can I tell you that it's not going to go up? I'm not going to tell you that. Can I tell you it's going to go down? I'm not going to tell you that either. I don't know. Those are questions that have to be answered. But I don't think that... Um, I can't, everybody but me on the committee is pretty intelligent, and so I think that they're going to understand that it's got to be affordable. And I don't think anybody on that committee is interested in limiting it, the amount of 4-H participation or FFA participation or sports banquet participation that, that goes on at the fairgrounds now. So hopefully they can be logical in what they decide to do on the rents. Are they going to be, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a percentage. Who knows? I don't know. That's, that's still on the table at this point. Can the new facility be large enough to uh, feed the entire Lutheran uh, chicken noodle bill in one place? It's my understanding that whatever the Lutheran church decides to feed, <laughs> it'll be double that because they feed more and more people every year. Yeah. Who knows? What a fabulous event. There's several of those that go on in the community, but that seems to be one of the biggest ones. Certainly hope that there's going to be a facility that's going to be big enough to set, set it. You know, they said 500. I, I think that they're shooting someplace between 500 and 1,000 to be able you could you could feed that many people on the on the ground floor of the arena cool. with tables and chairs and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Questions? That's it. I'm done. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs>